Okay, so this lecture, as I said before, is focused on hydropneumatic tanks. So that's uh, the advanced surge protection. And they are pretty advanced. There are quite a few different options as far as uh, how you configure a hydropneumatic tank, but they are quite effective and used uh, quite often. So it is an important topic to, uh, to discuss on its own. So um, high energy systems and gas vessels. So um, gas vessels, also known as hydropneumatic tanks, are very reliable and um, they, like I said, they are often used in hammer, uh, but they tend to be more on the expensive side and a little bit harder to maintain. So, um, you know, the cylinder that makes up the tank itself is either horizontal or vertical. Uh, vertical types are usually for uh, more of the, the sewer industry. Uh, but the basics is that you have uh, an enclosed tank that is comprised of some water and some compressed uh, air or, or some type of gas. So what happens is as water is entering the tank, uh, it compresses that gas and it allows the hydraulic grade to be higher than the top of the tank. So, um, so when a hydropneumatic tank is being filled, which is usually from an upstream pump, the water volume increases and the air is compressed, as I said. So when it's turned off, that compressed air maintains the pressure in the system until the water is all drained out of the tank. So you have a relatively small uh, volume of water in these things, but uh, at a relatively high pressure. So they're pretty, pretty good at, uh, you know, keeping that water column moving in, in a shutdown, a pump shutdown event, or, you know, some type of uh, down surge event, usually from a pump. Uh, so the storage of energy from that compressed uh, air or gas allows for, you know, such a, a high, high head to be maintained within a relatively small enclosed space. So if you contrast that to um, the right side, which is basically a surge tank, you would have to build that surge tank as high as the, uh, the, the hydraulic grade to be able to provide the same level of protection. Of course, with a surge tank, that opens the ability to have uh, a, a greater volume, which means that you know the surge tank would probably uh, take longer to drain out in such an event. But usually, it's just not uh, it's not practical for that that type of uh, you know tall tank to be constructed. And that's why these uh, hydro pneumatic tanks tend to be a, a good option for transient protection. And, and oftentimes, these Hydropneumatic tanks are installed just for transient protection, you know, situations where they, you know, for most of the time during normal operating conditions when the pump is on, that, you know, that tank is not doing anything. It's just, it's pressurized up to line pressure, and there's just water uh, sitting there waiting to, uh, you know, come out in the event that, you know, that pump shuts down. So as far as operating a gas vessel, so this is a concern because you usually need to have some type of uh, compressor usually uh, attached to it that would you know, refill that gas or recharge that gas because eventually you know, that gas will dissolve into the water even if it's slowly, you know, over time you will have to you know, um, recompress that gas. Um, there is an option that some use to store the gas or the air in in a um, in a, a rubber bladder, and that you know prevents having to have a compressor. Um, but then you know you're dealing with another uh, sort of not really mechanical component, but it's another you know added complexion and another possible thing that uh, you know that could go go wrong. Something could go wrong with the bladder uh, potentially and uh, cause problems. Whereas you know, if you don't have a bladder, then you might be able to have, uh, you know, some type of sight, uh, sight glass and, you know, you'll know when it needs to be recharged and you'll have the ability to uh, do that with your compressor. So, uh, again, you know, when the pressure drops, when the pump shuts down, that trapped air in the gas vessel expands and, wat and pushes that water out and the water enters the system and keeps that water column moving, uh, thereby mitigating for the most part uh, you know a down surge event and then if you have a pressure spike or you know re reflected uh, transient wave that comes back as a a uh, positive upsurge then that can also absorb that because 
you know, the water then goes back into the tank and recompresses that gas and kind of cushions it. So these, these tend to do a pretty good job. Um, now, as far as maintaining these things, um, you know, if the level, if the water level in the tank is too high, then there may not be enough gas. So you kind of have to, you know, make sure that you uh, put some thought into, you know, the operating range as far as when a, you know, if these are not being used solely for transient protection, you need to put some thought into, you know, what are the set points for the controls as far as uh, when, a, you know, when a pump will turn on versus off. So again, this this may apply to cases where you actually are using the hydropneumatic tank uh, as storage, where you have a pump turn on, it fills up the tank, and then once it gets up to a certain uh, pressure set point, that pump turns off. You know, think of uh, just a, a well in a in a house. Um, so some things to consider as far as the level set points. You know, usually you have a, a high and low level, and that's usually based on some pressure. Uh, as far as uh, turning the pumps on or off, um, then you may have a high or low alarm, you know, above which uh, some type of alarm will, will alert, alert you to some problem, and also some type of uh, mechanism for, uh, you know, knowing when uh, air needs to be added or, you know, some, something, some kind of maintenance needs to be done. Um, and the last point here is that the set points need to be different enough from the normal operating range to avoid spurious warnings. So basically um, make sure that there's enough distance between these set points so that the alarms aren't going off uh, you know at times where it's not really something to be concerned with. Um, so this slide is about the uh, the bladder options. So this slide is a little bit specific to hammer. So if you have a hydropneumatic tank that has a built-in bladder uh, what happens is that bladder needs to be uh, pre-charged. It needs to have some um, some pre-charged pressure, and it needs to be pressurized before it's submitted to the pipeline, before it's actually installed to the pipeline. So uh, once you install it in the pipeline, you open up the valve or whatever, and and water comes in and is uh, compressing that gas. Then that bladder can compress to its uh, expected uh, volume basically. So in Hammer, um, I'm going to switch over to Hammer for a moment because this is a, a bit of a, a difficult one to explain without the visual. So let me go ahead and put that up here. So this model that I'm looking at here is one that is included with Hammer. This is in the samples folder within the installation folder. It's called Hydropneumatic Tank Example. And this one includes a simple system where there's two pumps in parallel pumping up to a reservoir, and there's a hydropneumatic tank in the middle. So there's a whole bunch of different scenarios here for the different types of arrangements you can have uh, without a bladder, uh, with a differential orifice, which we'll talk about, maybe one that's uh, purposely undersized to show you the, the effect. Um, treat, you know, the, lots of different ways you can set these up. So I wanted to, in particular, relate the slide on the bladder to the actual product. So in the properties of your hydropneumatic tank, you have a true-false field called, called has bladder. So you'll notice if that's set to false and you set it to true, you get an additional field here called pressure gas preset. So this is the pressure inside the, uh, the bladder before it's submitted to pipeline pressure. So Hammer basically takes this pressure and takes the full tank volume that you have to enter here and from that it uses the gas law equation PV equals NRT to um, develop that that uh, gas law relationship between pressure and volume so from there it knows well once you actually have this element uh, connected in, in the model and you're computing initial conditions you have some starting uh, hydraulic grade in there and based on that relationship that it establishes based on the preset pressure and full volume it will know what that bladder will basically compress to what what volume uh, it will compress to um, based on that change in pressure that initial pressure in that uh, so that's something that's not always entirely evident that uh, you know what is this preset pressure, how come it's not using my, um, you know, initial uh, liquid volume. It's, you know, when you're using a bladder, you're entering the pre-charge pressure, the pressure that the bladder was uh, 
you know, pressurized to while that bladder was occupying the full tank volume. So you think of the, you know, the tank is not installed on the pipeline yet. It's, it's sitting over on the side. You're, you've yet to install it. But there's a bladder inside, and it's pre-charged at a certain pressure, but that bladder is occupying the full, uh, you know, the full volume of that tank. Maybe the pressure is, is a little bit low, and that's something that is, uh, you know, there are some rules of thumb out there. Uh, sometimes you'll, you'll have requirements from manufacturers or maybe your, your reviewers, uh, or maybe it's something that you need to use your experience with, but, you know, usually the pre-charge pressure might be something on the order of, uh, you know, 10%, uh, anywhere from 10, 15% to maybe up to 80% of the pipeline pressure. And uh, so again, you know, knowing that and knowing the initial pressure in the initial conditions, we know what that bladder will compress to, and then you have your initial uh, pressure and volume. So going back to the slide, there's a little diagram there at the bottom. So on the left, on the left side, this is a one I made here. So on the left side we have an example, uh, so the dark line is showing that, you know, the tank has not yet been submitted to the pipeline pressure. You've maybe attached it to the pipe, but it hasn't been opened up yet. So the gray area is the size of the bladder, basically. So the bladder initially occupies the full tank volume, which the full tank volume is a, is a user input thing, and the preset pressure is a user input field. And then we say, uh, basically, we sub submit the tank to pipeline pressure, which means we compute the initial conditions and we get some, uh, you know, hydraulic grade in that tank, which, um, in fact, I will switch back over to show you some flexibility on that. So how does it know what the initial hydraulic grade will be when submitted to pipeline pressure? Well, if it's a hydropneumatic tank that just sort of floats on the system where you know, whatever the pump operating point is, it just pressurizes up to that point and it just, you know, it's neither filling nor draining. Uh, if that's the case, then you set this treat as junction option to true. And then when you compute the initial conditions, that basically gets you your, your initial pressure. It, it's treated as if it was a junction in the initial conditions. It computes the pressure and that becomes your sort of balanced uh, floating uh, initial pressure in your tank. So again, it takes that pressure along with the pressure and volume relationship that was established, and that, and from that, it knows what the bladder will be compressed to as far as the the, the volume. So again, back to the slide. Uh, so this gray area here is your bladder. So once you have a, a certain pressure uh, in the pipeline, uh, we know that it compresses to say maybe a third of the full tank volume. And then in your transient results, you'll see at the very first time step, you'll, you'll be able to see that, uh, that calculated gas volume and the resulting, uh, the pressure that, that goes along with it, which would be equal to the initial conditions pressure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.